I'm Liz, and by some twist of fate, I'm married to the most amazing guy I've ever met, Alex. We're both 28, living in our own place, managing our bills, and enjoying a life that's entirely our own. It's been a year since we tied the knot, and honestly, life has been good, except for one minor detail. Alex's parents. Don't get me wrong, I never expected to be the daughter-in-law of the year, but I also didn't expect to feel like an intruder in their family. From the moment I met my in-laws, it felt like I'd walked into a lion's den with a stake tied around my neck. My mother-in-law, Jane, had this way of looking at me as if she was trying to decide whether I was more of a nuisance or just plain dull. I could tell she had already judged me and found me lacking before I'd even managed a hello. Alex had given me a heads up about his mom. She can be a bit much, he said as we drove to their house for the first time. But don't take it personally, okay? I didn't, or at least I tried not to. At dinner, while passing the salt, Jane remarked, You know, Stephanie used to cook such wonderful meals. Remember that risotto, honey? She said to Alex, who just nodded, his jaw set tight. Yeah, I remember, he replied, not looking at me. I sat there, salt shaker in hand, feeling invisible as they spoke about Stephanie as if I wasn't even there. A pang of hurt hit me, but I swallowed it down with a smile. Sounds like she was a great cook, I said, trying to appear unaffected. Jane's eyes met mine, and she smiled, but it didn't quite reach her eyes. Oh, she was. She was a lot of things. That night, I told Alex how I felt like I was being measured against some ghost. Alex hugged me close. You're the one I chose, Liz. That's all that matters. I wanted to believe him, but I soon realized that Jane had a long game in mind and I was just a pawn she was eager to sacrifice. Living with allergies is more than just inconvenient. It feels like having a shadow constantly whispering danger in your ear. Peanuts have been my arch nemesis since childhood. It started with a spoonful of peanut paste and a trip to the emergency room that left my parents with a clear message. Keep her away from peanuts and a long list of other foods if you want her to grow up. It's not just peanuts, though. Soy, peas, cherries, almonds, tomatoes, apricots, bananas, and even potatoes are off limits. It's a list that raises eyebrows with waiters and makes friends hesitate to invite me over for dinner. Jane knows this list by heart, yet every time we're over for dinner, she questions it. Are you sure you can't even have a little bit of this pie? It has almond extract, she asked with a tone that wavered between concern and disbelief. I smile politely, though I'd rather not, and say, yeah, I'm sure. Thanks, though. It was the same routine every time. I remember a particular family gathering where I was carefully navigating the buffet, mentally running through my checklist of safe foods. Alex was by my side, plate in hand, trying to help me find something I could eat without risk. That's when Jane swooped in with her sickly sweet voice. Liz, you must try this casserole. I made sure it was Liz-friendly, she announced. But the glint in her eye didn't match her supposedly nurturing words. Alex paused with his fork midair. Mom, you use cream of mushroom soup in this, right? He asked, knowing that many brands include soy, which is a big no-no for me. Jane's smile faltered for a moment. Oh, I, I think so. It should be fine, she said, her voice trailing off. But I knew it wasn't fine. We made our excuses and I left the casserole untouched, though the incident lingered in my mind. It felt like a small victory in an ongoing battle where Jane seemed to hold all the cards because she controlled the kitchen. Navigating this world has become a careful operation. Dining out is like a strategic maneuver. Alex and I were at our favorite Italian place, a rare gem that understands the seriousness of food allergies. I recited my usual spiel to the waiter, who nodded in understanding. Alex watched me with those soft eyes of his, the ones that said he'd do anything to make my life easier. You okay? he asked after the waiter left. Yeah, I'm fine. I just hate making a fuss, I replied, folding my napkin in my lap. You're not making a fuss. You're making sure you don't, you know, die, he said, half joking, half serious. I laughed. A short, grateful sound. Well, when you put it that way. After dinner, as we walked under the clear night sky, I felt light and happy. That's when my phone buzzed with a text from Jane. Her words felt like a cloud over the moon, darkening the moment. Be careful, Liz. Not everyone takes your conditions seriously. Wouldn't want anything to happen to you. I read the text to Alex, who wrapped an arm around me, pulling me close. She's just trying to get to you, he said, but as much as I wanted to brush it off. I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's message was more than just a jab. 
that was a warning, a reminder that my allergies made me vulnerable, not just to food, but to people like her who saw it as a weakness to exploit. The rest of the walk home felt heavier, overshadowed by the sting of her words. I couldn't stop thinking about all the close calls and accidental exposures and how easily something could go wrong. It wasn't just the peanuts, soy, or peas. It was the realization that my allergy was more than a personal struggle. It was a vulnerability that someone like Jane could see as an opportunity. That thought was scarier than any allergic reaction I'd ever had. Dinners at Jane's house always felt like a carefully orchestrated production where everyone knew their parts except me. I was the wild card, the one who could unintentionally cause a scene with a single bite. Alex tried his best to make things better, but there's only so much you can do when you're on someone else's turf. One particular evening, the tension was as thick as the gravy on the table. Jane was bustling around, placing dish after dish on the table. I sat there, my own plate empty, waiting to figure out what I could eat without risking the trip to the hospital. Alex, darling, passed the green beans to Liz. They're just divine, Jane said, her voice dripping with sweetness that didn't reach her eyes. I eyed the beans warily. What's in them? I asked. Oh, just a touch of almond slivers for crunch, she said, waving a hand dismissively. I raised my hand to stop Alex's reach. I can't eat those. Remember, almonds are a no-go for me. Jane feigned surprise, placing a hand on her chest. Oh dear, I must have forgotten. Silly me. Alex's chair scraped back as he stood up. Mom, this is serious. Liz could end up in the hospital. His voice was firm, edged with frustration that made Jane's eyes narrow slightly. I just wanted to make something nice, she said defensively. It's not my fault Liz has all these allergies. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence. The other relatives glanced around, forks paused midair, unsure where to look. I felt a flush creeping up my neck, embarrassed by the sudden spotlight. Alex's dad, Mark, tried to break the tension. Let's just enjoy the meal, shall we? There's plenty Liz can eat. But the damage was done. The rest of the dinner passed in strained politeness, with Jane asking pointed questions about my allergies as if she were taking notes for next time. Later, when Alex and I were alone, he apologized. I'm sorry, Liz. I should have double-checked everything before we came. I shook my head, weary of always feeling like a problem to be managed. It's not your fault, but I'm starting to think your mom does these things on purpose. He didn't answer, and he didn't need to. We both knew the truth. Jane was serving up a side of malice with every meal and I was the main course. I could always tell when Jane had been working on Alex. He'd get this distant look in his eyes like he was seeing me but also seeing through me, weighing her words against his own judgment. That evening was no different. It felt like a cloud had settled over him before he even said a word. Mom thinks we should consider. Well, she thinks we might not be thinking about the future enough. Alex muttered, not meeting my eye as he fumbled with the TV remote. The future? I asked, a sinking feeling in my gut. Yeah, you know, kids and your health issues, he continued, the word issues hanging awkwardly between us. I felt a tightness in my chest. She talked to you about my allergies again, didn't she? He sighed, setting the remote down. She's just worried, Liz. She thinks it's a lot for us to handle, especially if we want a family. I bristled. We've talked about this. I've managed so far, haven't I? There are plenty of people with allergies who have kids. Alex ran a hand through his hair, a clear sign of his stress. I know, I know, it's just that she has this way of making me doubt things. The room fell silent for a moment, the tension palpable. I watched him, the man I loved, wrestling with the seeds of doubt his mother had planted. Alex, do you doubt us? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. No, he looked up, his eyes clear and firm. No, I don't. I just hate that she keeps bringing it up. I hate that it makes us fight. I reached for his hand, our fingers intertwining. We're not fighting. We're on the same side, remember? He nodded, pulling me into a hug. You and me against the world. Right, I said, though as I held him, I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's words were like weeds threatening to overtake the beautiful thing we had. I realized then that it wasn't just my allergies that needed managing. It was the doubts that could seep into even the strongest relationships. When the news of my pregnancy came, Alex's voice was a mix of pride and caution as he assessed his mother's reaction. That's wonderful, Jane managed to say, the words sounding foreign on her tongue. We must have a family dinner to celebrate. I was skeptical. Celebrations at Jane's were rarely just celebrations. But the hopeful look in Alex's eyes convinced me to agree. 
On the night of the dinner, the house buzzed with relatives. Jane played the perfect hostess, gliding from guest to guest with an almost convincing grace. When she reached us, her smile was practiced. Congratulations, Liz, she said. Tone almost too formal. This is such a joyous occasion. Thank you, Jane, I replied, matching her formality. We're excited. Alex wrapped his arm around my waist, a silent thank you for playing along. As dinner approached, my familiar anxiety returned. A table full of food was a minefield for me, but I hoped tonight would be different. The table was a grand feast, dishes upon dishes laid out. I could feel every eye on me as I hesitated, my hand hovering over the options. Go on, dear, Jane urged. Eat up. You're eating for two now. I smiled weakly, choosing the safest options, vegetables and plain rice. But as I reached for a slice of bread, Jane stopped me. Actually, maybe not that one, she said quickly. I'm not sure if the baker used soy flour. I paused, bread in hand, and met her gaze. There was a flicker of something in her eyes, concern or perhaps a challenge. Thank you for letting me know, I said putting the bread down. The warning bells were already ringing in my head. How did she know about the soy flour? It seemed too close a call, too perfect a save. The rest of the meal passed in a blur of congratulations and clinking glasses, but I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's hospitality was a veneer, hiding a trap set for the right moment. The family dinner in honor of our future baby was nothing short of a banquet. Jane had outdone herself, creating a spread that made Thanksgiving look modest. But my stomach was in knots, not from hunger, but from fear. Every dish was a potential hazard, a hidden enemy that could send me to the hospital or worse. As we all took our seats, the chatter around the table was lively, filled with the usual family gossip and stories. Jane presided over the feast at the head of the table, like a queen in her court. She called everyone to attention with a gentle tap of her glass. Before we begin, I just want to say how thrilled we are to be celebrating Liz and Alex's upcoming addition to our family, Jane announced, her voice steady and clear. There was a round of cheers and applause, but the weight of her words lingered heavily, a reminder of the underlying tension that I couldn't ignore. I forced a smile, feeling Alex's reassuring squeeze under the table. Thank you, everyone, I said. We're really looking forward to this new chapter in our lives. As the meal began, I picked up my food cautiously, sticking to the simplest options. Alex's concerned gaze was fixed on me. Are you doing okay? He asked quietly. Yeah, just being careful, I replied, pushing a roasted potato around my plate. Jane's eyes were on me, and I felt like a specimen under a microscope. Liz, you haven't touched your salad, Jane said, her voice overly cheerful. The dressing is on the side, just as you like it. Thank you, Jane, I said, avoiding the salad that I suspected might contain hidden allergens. I'm just not very hungry tonight. As the dinner went on, the tension mounted. Every time Jane offered me something, my anxiety spiked. The room seemed to grow hotter, the walls closing in with each passing minute. Then came the cake, a beautiful confection of sponge and cream that elicited ooze and ahs from the room. Jane cut a slice and handed it to me with a smile that might have been genuine if I didn't know better. For the mom-to-be, she said, her voice overly sweet. I looked at the cake, then at Alex, then back at Jane. I really shouldn't, I said though it looked delicious. Oh, come on, Liz, Jane pressed, her voice as sweet as the icing. One little bite won't hurt for the baby. That's when Alex's dad, Mark, intervened. With a swift movement, he knocked the plate from my hands. The cake tumbled to the floor, and a stunned silence fell over the room. What the hell, Dad? Alex exclaimed, his voice a mix of anger and confusion. Mark stood, his face pale but his voice firm. I saw the label in the trash. That cake has peanut oil in it. The room erupted into chaos. Jane's face was a mask of shock, but her eyes betrayed her. There was a flash of something darker, perhaps fear or guilt. Alex stood, his chair clattering behind him. Mom, did you know about this? He demanded. Jane's mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. In that moment, the truth was as clear as the danger that had been on my plate. The room fell silent, the dropped cake on the hardwood floor like a crime scene. Everyone's eyes were locked on Jane, who seemed to shrink under the collective gaze. Mom, is it true? Did you know? Alex's voice cut through the tension, sharp and demanding. Jane's eyes flickered with something dark before she regained her composure. Of course not, she said, her voice trailing off, unconvincing. 
Mark wasn't having any of it. I saw the shopping list, Jane. Peanut oil for the cake. It was right there in your handwriting, he said, his voice steady but laced with disappointment. The murmurs around the table grew louder, a mix of disbelief and anger bubbling up from the family. Alex's hands were balled into fists, his voice shaking. How could you, Mom? Liz could have died. I was frozen in my seat, the gravity of the situation anchoring me down. This wasn't just carelessness or forgetfulness. It was intentional. Jane's mask finally slipped, her face twisting in anger. I never wanted it to come to this, but Jane's words cut deeply. She's not right for you, Alex, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. She's weak, and now she's bringing a child into this world who will be just like her. Alex's face was a mix of disbelief and anger. He stepped toward his mother, his voice rising. Weak? Liz is the strongest person I know. How could you be so cruel? I felt the weight of Jane's words pressing down on me, the eyes of the room watching for any sign of me breaking under the strain, but I held firm. Jane, I said, my voice surprisingly steady, you've made your feelings clear, but this isn't just about me, it's about a family, a grandchild. Jane's gaze dropped, her jaw clenched. For the first time, I saw a flicker of fear in her eyes. Maybe she realized that her actions had not only endangered me but had also jeopardized her relationship with her son, her reputation, everything. The rest of the evening blurred into a chaotic mix of arguments, tears, and hushed conversations as the family struggled to process what had happened. Alex and I left early, the weight of the night heavy on our shoulders. The drive home was silent, filled with the kind of weighty quiet that lingers between unsaid words. When we finally walked through our front door, the echoes of the night still resonated. Alex was the first to break the silence. I can't believe my own mother would do something like that, he said, his voice hollow. I sank onto the couch, the cushion offering little comfort. I know it's a lot to take in, Alex said as he sat beside me, taking my hands in his. I'm so sorry, Liz. This is unforgivable. I looked at him, the pain in his eyes making my heart ache. It's not your fault, Alex. We couldn't have known she'd go this far, I reassured him. But the truth was clear. Jane had crossed the line, and there was no going back. Our family was fractured, some shocked and appalled by Jane's actions while others struggled to comprehend the situation. In the days that followed, Alex's phone buzzed incessantly with calls and messages. Relators wanted to express their shock, support, and apologies. Amidst it all, there was a deafening silence from Jane. No apologies. No explanations, just emptiness. A week later, Alex delivered the news. Dad left her, he said quietly. He can't get past what she did. It's been a long time coming. I wasn't sure how to process it. Relief? Sadness? Pity for Jane? And Jane? I asked tentatively. She's not handling it well, Alex replied, a hint of regret in his tone. She's alone now. We sat in our living room, surrounded by the walls we painted together and the furniture we'd chosen during countless trips to the store. It was our home, filled with our memories and love. Outside, a storm seemed to brew, threatening to uproot everything. Yet in that moment, I realized that despite the turmoil, we had each other. We were a team, about to welcome a new life into the world. And that was what mattered most. I love you, Liz, Alex said, pulling me close. I love you too. I whispered back. The fallout from that night would linger, leaving scars that would take time to heal. But as I looked at Alex and the life we had built, and as we prepared for the future, I knew we could weather any storm together. Jane was a chapter in our lives that had ended, a story that would not define us. From now on, it was just us, our baby, and the road ahead. Whatever came, we would face it together.